In a previous video, I showed you how to import a CSV file into Python using Pandas. Then we visualized the data with matplotlib. Today, we're going to take that data and add both time series and date time values to it. I will start with a notebook I used to bring in the CSV file and modify it. You can check out the links below to see the video explaining how to bring the CSV file in. I also have the notebook in the GitHub repository if you want to pull down a copy and follow along. I need a few additional libraries for the time series. One of these is the main matplotlib. I also need the time delta library. Next, we run the notebook to bring the data in so we have something to look at and work with as we do our coding. Great, we've got our plot up. In this section, we add a kind of a clock called the time series to our pandas data frame. We created a plot with data and sample numbers previously, but to interact better with the data, enhance plotting, and enable other fun processing, we're going to have to be able to plot the data against time. Our CSV file tells us how fast we collected data. The speed is called sampling frequency, the number of samples per second. We also know that each data point has been captured after the same amount of time has passed. In other words, each sample has been acquired at evenly spaced time intervals. These two properties allow us to assign a sample number to each data point. We start the sample number at zero and add one for every data point we collect. Since the data points are evenly spaced in time, dividing the sample number by how fast we collected the data, the sampling frequency, gives us the elapsed time in seconds. The CSV file has these sample numbers, labeled sequence numbers, that could have been used directly. However, a more general approach creates a series using numpy's linspace command. First, we use the len function to find the total number of samples. The variable ns holds this value. The data series in the CSV file has two sampling frequencies, one for each column of data. We're going to assume that both data series have the same sampling frequency. We enforce that assumption with an assert. That assert passed, confirming our data sampling rates are the same. Our sample number begins at zero, and it ends at one less than the total number of samples we calculated earlier. Ranging from zero to ns minus one gives us ns sample numbers. Next, we divide the sample number by sampling frequency, giving us values in units of time. With the time series calculation complete, we're going to plot it out. This plot looks a lot like the one we created above when we brought the data in. However, the horizontal axis now has units of elapsed time in seconds. In this format, some informal analysis can be performed on the data. For example, looking at the vertical grid lines, there's about 0.2 to 0.4, so there's about two-tenths of a second between each line. That tells us the events in the signal happen even faster. The time labels give us an idea of how fast the signal changes. The next thing I want to do in this tutorial is switch from the elapsed time series data to the timestamp data. This section adds date timestamps to our pandas data frame. One thing we do differently in this section is replace the data frame index. We're not going to get into it too much here, but if you want to do any time series analysis, it's helpful to have the index of your pandas data frame be a date time value. We begin this process by taking an assertion to check our assumption that the date and time are the same for both of our data series in the CSV file. If it's not, we're going to throw an error. The assert passed, confirming we have the same date timestamps for both data series. How do we take those time series values above and create date timestamps? We do this using a lambda function. If you haven't done much with lambda functions, it's just a way to add a short inline function into your code. The lambda function uses the time delta function, which we imported above. For each time series value in seconds in our numpy array, it adds that value in seconds to our original date time value and creates a new date time stamp. This results in a list of date time stamps. This line in the code takes that existing data frame and adds a date time column using the lambda function. Next, we replace the index with the new dt column that we created. With that done, we want to take a minute and print out part of the data frame. This looks like we'd expect with date time values as the new index. The column x was the old index, the sample number or sequence number, but now stands as an independent column. The columns ch1, channel 1, and ch2, channel 2, show voltage values acquired from the oscilloscope. The elap underscore time column holds the time series values we created above. One thing that makes date time values more interesting to work with than just time series value in seconds is the concept of localization. In other words, how do we manage the date time values to make sense for the viewer on the screen, regardless of the time zone in which the device collected the data? 
Although we don't have to do this for this exercise, I will convert the date time values to local time. And have you noticed the date time values up here? They have the year, month, second, etc. Further, the text string also has this minus eight. The minus eight indicates the clock time measurements have been measured relative to UTC. In this case, we were eight hours behind UTC. UTC is an awkward concept to put on a plot, so for this reason, we convert it to local time. The plot code has more complexity, so I will go through that before I run the code. This time, we're going to use matplotlib's plot function. We'll plot the independent variable as the local time we calculated up here, and we're going to use channel one for our signal here. Because we're dealing with time series data collected at very high rates, we need to change the x-axis format. We must add this point percent %f to the data formatter to display seconds.microseconds. I think most of these lines are self-explanatory. However, we do want to make sure that we have exactly four bins on the plot. And we've added a rotation in here because the date timestamps are long. Without rotation, the date timestamp values overlap. When we execute the code, it produces a plot with date timestamps along the horizontal axis. In this tutorial, we added both time series and date timestamps to our pandas data frame. In the next tutorial, I want to use the time series data that we added to estimate the shaft speed from these spikes in the signal. I hope you join me in that adventure, and I'm glad you joined today.